So good afternoon, uh, everybody. If the ones that just logged in, please check the chat window because you can use the chat window during the webinar also to ask questions. So I am the only one that has audio switched on, so I'm the only one able to talk to you. And in a few minutes, I will hand over uh, the audio to Puria, who is uh, ready to go. But before we start, I would like to give you a bit of information about uh, IPPN. Because we are organizing this uh, online webinar uh, based uh, uh, in the International Plant Phenotyping Network, the Imaging Working Group. So it's a dedicated group focused on imaging. And Tony Pritmore is in there, Hanno Schaar, uh, Sotosh, and me. I'm Rick van der Zerre, the host of today. And we will organize all kinds of events, actually, in the upcoming years. Uh, just to show you who we are, Tony, Hanno, Sotosh, and me. And um, just a, one minute, actually, to give you a bit of insight of what we will do. So one thing, hopefully you've noticed this already, we are organizing the CVPPP 2017 at the ICCP in Venice. It's in the end of this year, in the autumn. You can still submit abstracts if you're interested to go there. But we'll do more. We are also sponsored by ITPN in the summer school at the uh, Wageningen University and Research Center. It's a four-day summer school focused on imaging and phenotyping. But it's already fully booked, so it's just for your information. And we are organizing these webinars, these online webinars, uh, using the tool Join Me. So if you are logged in, you found the tool, and you're able to uh, participate. And there will be more following soon. So if you have an interesting topic that you would like to share with the IPPN uh, imaging working group, just let me know. More information can also be found on the uh, web address below. We are uh, having a blog. You can read information uh, there. And we have the Twitter account, which you can follow. So the presenter of today is Puria Sadegi Tera. He's a field phenotyping image analysis and data handler at Rottenstedt Research. And the topic will be the field scanalyzer. And for everybody who is now logged in, also the newcomers, you can use the chat window of the Join Me tool, which is the tiny speed balloon uh, on the top of your window. You can ask your questions there also for Puria during the session. And after his presentation, we can collect the interesting questions and uh, go through them uh, uh, after 40 minutes. So I'll hand over the word to Puria right now. So give us a few seconds to switch the presenter role. All right, great. Can, can you hear me? Yep. I can. can you see my screen as well? Yep, I can see your PowerPoint. Yeah, all right. So I'll switch on to present it. All right. Yep. So, yeah. Greeting everyone. Uh, my name is Puria. I'm image and data analyst uh, working at Rotamsted. And today I would like to give you a brief overview of phenotyping activities that have been doing at Rotamsted and some of the application and algorithms uh, we have developed uh, to analyze such data. So if uh, for those of you who haven't heard about uh, Rotamsted uh, research is the longest running agricultural research institute in the world since 1843. Uh, and uh, the aim of the Institute is basically to develop environmentally sustainable solution for agriculture. So we have a very multidisciplinary team and department at Rotamsted uh, and uh, uh, for around 400 scientists working at Rotamsted at the moment. And a brief introduction. Uh, 
uh, about myself. So I'm not a plant scientist. Uh, my research background is electrical engineering and computer science. And during my PhD, I studied and developed algorithms to model real-time data streams with high level of computational efficiency. And I applied these concepts on a variety of applications, mostly uh, image processing and video analytics and some con on control systems and robotic application as well. Before I moved to Rotamsted for about two years ago, I'm working on phenotyping uh, applications. So as we all know, and uh, doing the traditional field uh, uh, phenotyping in general is very tedious and time consuming uh, in terms of um, counting number of wheat ears or uh, um, measuring uh, plant height to scoring, visual scoring and identifying key growth stage and so on. So the rise of uh, digital agriculture is open up a lot of opportunity for plant scientists and also it brought a lot of challenges for plant scientists, uh, uh, for computer scientists and data analysts uh, as well. So at Rotamsted, uh, we um, um, basically established two, I call it modern uh, phenotyping platforms. So uh, one, a UAV for high throughput, low density uh, uh, kind of phenotyping, and also a field disk analyzer uh, for lower throughput uh, and high density phenotyping. So in this presentation, I'll go to each of the platforms and give a brief overview and introduction of each platform and some of the data we captured so far from each platform individually. So in terms of UAVs, we have two uh, UAV, oxocopter and hexacopter, and we have a visible cameras, a thermal imaging and multispectral um, um, for each um, kind of uh, hexacopter and octocopter UAVs. And our typical kind of experiment uh, is a, a, a four, a 200 kilometers and 5,000 uh, plots. So it's our typical uh, kind of uh, experiment. We are monitoring uh, our plant growth and development using UAVs. And also we have uh, some trials like vision trials. We uh, are doing some nitrogen use um, efficiency experiment. Uh, over um, 200 varieties uh, which, uh, for the last uh, 10 years, for instance. So during each flight, we uh, usually capture over 500 images with 80% overlap. And we also have uh, 12 ground points uh, on the field as well. And so we use these ground points and uh, these images with 80% overlap to create a digital elevation model of the whole field. Uh, so the the the, uh, the first and most important things we're using uh, and, and getting the, the data from this visual uh, 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 digital elevation model uh, is measuring uh, canopy height, and uh, we also validate these data with the manual measurements, and we are happy very happy with the results. So there is very high correlation between the manual measurements and the data we're getting from UAV, which is flight over. 50 meters above a canopy. We also um, um, measuring uh, NDVI using visible cameras and also canopy uh, monitoring canopy temperatures from our thermals. It is a work in progress because it's not very a trivial task in terms of calibrating and uh, the data we are getting from uh, a thermal imaging, which is uh, flying usually 50 meters above canopy. So the group working on the UAV applications um, basically has come up with the frameworks. Uh, so you can uh, later on uh, um, click on each individual plot and then you list all the data you captured from each individual plot through the seasons. So there are some advantages that we all know using UAVs. So you cover a larger area in short period of time and it is relatively <coughs> low cost. However, there are some limitations and drawbacks. For instance, uh, a limited payload, for instance, is six to seven kilos. Uh, and also we, we require an operator to fly UAVs. And um, for instance, in UK, um, in 
to, to restricted regulations, you need to get a license. And also because we are close to Luton Airport, we each time before flying, we need to get permission from uh, flight controls from Luton Airport as well. And the environmental conditions. So especially in UK, it's usually windy and rainy. So you have a really limited flight time during the season. So about two years ago, uh, we launched a, a field disk analyzer. It's co-designed by Lemnotech and Rothamsted and constructed by uh, Lemnotech. So it's more uh, reliable and robust to, <coughs> excuse me, to environmental condition. And it is uh, capable of 24 seven operation. So the, the um, um, operation area is 115 meters and by 12 uh, meters and uh, fully automatic um, and hardwired so all the data is automatically stored on a database so this image for instance shows our this year experiment uh, captured early may and we usually have three years rotation so at the top um, end we have our wheat experiments in the middle um, oil seed rape and at the bottom end oats and our main focus is uh, on wheat and wheat varieties and nitrogen use efficiency identifying plant traits and so on so if i uh, quickly show you this uh, image so this is our uh, typical experiment this is experiments captured from our uav and if i zoom in so this is our uh, wheat experiment this year so it's uh, 80 cent uh, centimeters by one meters, and we have two varieties uh, next to each other in one plot. I'm monitoring uh, this year, for instance, 500 wheat varieties. And in the middle, we have oil seed rape, and we do some stool for experiments uh, on oil seed rape, but it's not our main focus. It is part of the uh, uh, rotation, basically. And at the bottom end, we have our oats, uh, experiment we do some special variation uh, test with our statistician but again it's not our main uh, focus so the the camera bay itself is capable of a half a ton pale we have an eight megapixel a visible camera which we capture can capture 100 power we also have a two megapixel thermal camera uh, we get a 230 plus per hour. We also have two hyperspectral sensors, veneer and x veneer. Also, we have a PS2 fluorescence in the middle from Finnovation. And also, two lasers from Fraunhofer to get a 3D model of our canopies. And we can get a 300, um, basically, a scan 330 plus uh, per hour. And also, we have VR and CO2 sensors which we don't usually rely on the data we're getting from these things. So overall, including the weather stations at the top of the, and the, the gantry, overall we have nine different sensors. Uh, the majority are in kind of the techniques and image-based sensors. So uh, from the beginning, the platform, the, basically set up a very systematic workflow in terms of operating the platform daily and capturing data from each individual uh, sensors and how frequently we um, running the platform depends on the growth stage and uh, set up a data management systems um, storing automatic data in the data uh, they can access this data easily uh, and we also develop our own application and software to analyze these data. So we don't rely on any commercial software. And we uh, store back this analyzed data to the database as well. And also we work closely with statisticians uh, at Rotam analysis uh, of this analyzed data, make sense of this data in more details. So the overall goal is a comprehensive assessment of a, a plant trace in terms of growth development, architecture, tolerance, resistance through the whole plant uh, and wheat life cycle from germination to senescence before harvest. And as I mentioned, we develop our own applications 
uh, and uh, we make sure to, to uh, address some key requirements and challenges in terms of developing and analyzing and developing the applications uh, and analyzing this data. For instance, speed is uh, one of the main factors. So we're dealing with high throughput data, which is generated every day. So we make sure that the, 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 uh, the, the application can handle such a uh, huge amount of data. Also robustness. so we work on the field uh, <coughs> and in dynamic environment. So we make sure that we have to uh, 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 an application which can handle uh, invariance and illumination changes, for instance, and flexibility, reliability is another factors. We work 500 varieties, for instance, this year. So we have to develop uh, for an algorithm which can work on all varieties, not only one or two specifically. And the accuracy, we're working on with companies and readers, and they need at least 85 to 90 percent accuracy. And achieve this level of accuracy for computer, some computer vision applications is very challenging. So I give you some example of develop to analyze these data in the next few slides. So our main focus in this presentation is the analyzed data we've got from our visible camera, 3D uh, scanners, and thermal imaging. We've done and uh, done is on hyperspectral and PS2 fluorescence, but really uh, talking about those as beyond uh, this presentation, it requires a separate presentation. So starting uh, with a visible camera, the thing we've done uh, was <laughs> monitoring canopy uh, closure maturations by segmenting vegetation from the stage that I showed uh, on this image on the top left to full closure and senescent before harvest. And because we're working on the field condition, these dynamic environments and these illumination changes, it uh, wasn't an easy task. So if you look at a literature, there are uh, many uh, vegetation segmentation techniques uh, proposed and to extract a, a vegetation, for instance. They usually use a single on a, a very a good uh, lighting, and, and they uh, claim that they, their method uh, works fine. However, when you apply on the condition with noisy background, spectral reactance, they really can't handle these uh, uh, noisy backgrounds. For instance, this is one of uh, one example. GR is a color uh, uh, index based techniques and ACE, which is, uh, is a, a learning based technique, machine learning based techniques. They both uh, really can handle this uh, background noise. Or spectral reflections is another example. So, believe it or not, we have sunny days in UK and uh, dealing with spectral reflections is another challenge. So, we developed uh, supervised machine learning techniques and building a training data set and training our classification model and later on and to predict those as vegetation or background and as you can see and can reliably handle the background noise in previous slides and also the, the spectral reflectance compared to other well-known vegetation techniques in literature. So we're monitoring uh, this uh, canopy closure through the whole uh, wheat life cycle from germination uh, over winter period to full maturation and senescence. So this graph, for instance, is a comparison between our method and different kind of the, uh, the, the vegetation segmentation techniques. They, at some point, they all work uh, um, reliably. They work fine, so you get a more or less same values, but some of them really can perform consistently through the, the whole plant life cycles. For instance, ACE is one, one example. So sometimes they uh, considerably significantly underestimate or overestimate uh, the, the vegetation. So this is uh, so one example of three different wheat varieties in different uh, uh, days after storing uh, 
uh, let's say, and the comparison between our techniques and uh, with others, uh, which co sometimes considerably uh, underestimating or uh, overestimating. For instance, the K-min or ACE is an uh, unsupervised machine learning technique compares to our method. So we uh, just submitted a, a paper to plant uh, methods and it is uh, under review and uh, um, um, describing the, the, the applications I, I, I mentioned uh, in, this, uh, in this slide. So counting number of years uh, uh, is another important factor for us, uh, which we can predict yield and yield components. So we started with a color thresholding, which works fine, but it wasn't really an option for us because again, we are working on the field and we can't really rely on uh, color thresholding when you uh, working on the field with a 500 a variety. So it may work with one or two, but not all of them. So we develop uh, image processing techniques using age detection and some morphological analysis to segment ears from a, a, a different plant different organs, a leaf, and a soil. It is uh, um, extremely fast. So this is a short demo showing how fast the processing is. And we also using, in some scenarios, we also use A4 sheet. So we identify this A4 sheet uh, so we can count number of ears in the, inside the image and also calculate number of ears per meter square. Uh, we validate this data, ground through this data with the manual measurements. And uh, there is a nice correlation between them. And uh, for this particular example, it took two days for my two colleagues to count 72 plots, but this method only took a two minutes, 41 seconds. There is a, 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 a nice correlation between a, a manual and automatic uh, measurements, but we noticed um, in high density canopy, this method, it tends to slightly underestimate the number of ears when you have too many overlapping uh, ears. So we develop another supervised machine learning techniques uh, to identify and localize the ears inside them. So it's not, it's still under development. As you can see, it's not perfect at the moment, um, but potentially it can be more accurate. Um, however, there is a, a drawback and there is a, a trade-off between accuracy and the processing time. So you know, we're talking about a supervised machine learning techniques uh, and training data set. So it potentially it can be more accurate, but it is not as fast as the previous method I mentioned earlier. Identifying a growth stage, autom uh, automatically identifying growth stage uh, um, is another uh, important task uh, for us. We manage and to do that with high level of accuracy. So we uh, now uh, can automatically identify two growth uh, with growth stage of heading and flowering. So when you look at the canopy two meters um, ab uh, above a canopy, uh, identifying this heading at early stage is very, uh, uh, even by human eyes, is very challenging and sometimes not possible. But uh, we get a 95% accuracy even at very early stage, and we apply the same concept on the flowering time, but we got 88% accuracy. But recently, we also installed the side view cameras uh, on the field scan analyzer, so we hopefully can increase this level of uh, accuracy. And we recently published uh, a paper based on this technique uh, in uh, Frontiers as well, if you are interested. So uh, these are some of the examples uh, on analyzing the visible camera. But we also have done some applications on a 3D, which we hope to do with decent amount of information from the 3D and it's very promising uh, for us. So, and we have two laser scanners from front, uh, Fraunhofer, which are looking uh, down and they both base, uh, uh, work in, in, uh, separately from each other. They both 
uh, generate a, a point cloud and then you merge these point clouds uh, uh, together and you get the 3D model of your canopy. So this is just an example of your, uh, the 3D model of your canopy you're getting. So you can uh, zoom in on inside the canopy, you can rotate it uh, with high level of uh, uh, high resolution actually. In some scenarios, you can even count the number of uh, sparklet. So the first task uh, we've done using our 3D data uh, was uh, measuring uh, a canopy a height. Um, so before that, we had to address some of the challenges. For instance, when you merge these two point clouds, and um, um, we are not sure exactly the reason. Maybe the sensors uh, at the beginning wasn't quite uh, aligned. Uh, uh, or due to movement of the platform, when you merge these point clouds, you ended up with a duplicated object instead of a single one. So we had to add um, another processing time and other algorithms uh, known as iterative closest point to remove this duplication uh, before processing and uh, the three D data. So the first application we developed um, was measuring a canopy height. However, it wasn't a trivial task. We had to address some of the uh, challenges, for instance, um, uh, addressing the uh, removing the outliers, automatically identifying a uh, soil level. There is a, a steep on, on the field, so there is a, a considerable difference, a soil level difference, even in one plot from one end uh, to another. And as I mentioned earlier, we are and two varieties very next to each other and sometimes a taller variety next to the shorter one so we had to remove these outliers before measuring height so like vegetation um, and canopy closure monitoring we're monitoring and uh, canopy height uh, from germination event plants is uh, five uh, ten ten centimeters five to ten centimeters and uh, two uh, before harvest so this example, for instance, is from our last year uh, data. Um, so it's a, a nitrogen use efficiency experiments on six different uh, varieties and uh, three different nitrogen levels. It's the N1 is soil, N2 is 100 kilos uh, per hectare, and N3 200 kilos per hectare. And dash lines represent a nitrogen application. And we are very happy with the, the accuracy uh, we're getting. We ground through this with the manual measurements and we get very hard correlation between automatic and manual one, regardless of all the challenges we had to address before and uh, measuring height. And this is just a very uh, amateur demo uh, I made myself showing you that the, how we basically monitoring this canopy uh, development uh, um, and we have we get this 3D model of the canopy art, uh, architectures uh, from beginning and to uh, the end through the whole uh, plant's life cycle. So for each individual plot, we have uh, such data. So then later on, we can go back into these uh, data and do uh, further uh, analysis and, um, for instance, and um, um, analyzing the wheat uh, development and growth, which I'll show you in the next slide. So we um, started before uh, um, measuring um, ear and growth and development, we had to segment um, um, ears in 3D data. We started with a single um, plant uh, using a clustering met uh, method to cluster point clouds based on the geometry characteristic of each point cloud, and which we managed successfully to segment ears from the rest of the organs. However, when you apply it on the full canopy with over 2 million point clouds, uh, which potentially uh, has um, 100 or 200 number of ears, it's a very computationally heavy task. So we started with the state-of-the-art algorithms using a Canuco, if I pronounce it correctly. So we uh, segment uh, is the cluster is the supervised uh, 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 classification techniques. 
So it's not uh, um, 100% quite accurate, but it's a good start for us. So we managed to segment, um, um, identify segment um, ears from the rest of the uh, um, canopy, and, and then we measure length and volume of uh, ears. Uh, however, it again, it wasn't a trivial task because it's not each ear, uh, there's a shape uh, to each, and it's not a really unified cylinder. So we had to um, break it down into small uh, segments and then find the middle of the ears and then measuring length of each uh, individual segment and then add these up together and uh, measuring volume the same. Uh, we tested and we compared uh, and the, the ear development in terms of length and the volume between N0 and N3. And there is a considerable noticeable difference between these two. However, we um, um, haven't got a chance to validate this data with the manual measurements. So that's why I didn't put uh, those results in the slides because I would like to make sure that the the, the data and the, the analysis we've got is correct before presented um, to you. So moving on to the uh, from 3D to thermal camera. So one of the tasks we're doing uh, regularly is measuring canopy temperature. Uh, however, if you want to uh, monitor in canopy temperature using a thermal camera only, um, it's really uh, it's, it's 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 not very possible. Uh, for instance, this figure shows a, a histogram of each uh, canopy, and there is a, not a clear contrast between uh, a vegetation and soil or backgrounds. You can't really uh, set up a, a, um, a threshold to say, okay, beyond this point is definitely vegetation, and beyond that point is definitely soil. So to address this. Uh, issue, uh, we use a, a visible camera and doing some sensor fusion uh, applications by warping a visible camera into a thermal uh, imaging. And uh, so uh, one of the advantage of using a, a field scanalyzer is you can go exactly to the same spot and observe the more or less the same area from each uh, individual sensors more and more than actually more than the one I uh, presented here, but they are not exactly overlap. So there is an offset and shift between each uh, sensor. So we had to find the, the overlap and common area between these two. And then we applied the segmentation techniques are presented earlier on the common area to segment uh, uh, vegetation and use this as a mask over a thermal imaging. So then in that case, uh, we make sure that we only uh, get the temperature from vegetation and we manage to um, uh, remove uh, background in soil. So we're me measuring a canopy temperature during the season and also some kinetic experiments during the day, for instance, from early morning to uh, till evening as well. We've done some analysis uh, and developed some applications to analyze the hyperspectral imaging, which again is a challenging task when you're working on the field, this illumination and uh, changes and calibrating these data and um, analyzing uh, uh, PS2 fluorescence, for instance, and measuring uh, these data as uh, uh, analyzing these data uh, as well, which really it needs a separate um, uh, talk and presentation. Uh, hopefully uh, in my next um, um, presentation, I presented some of the results we've got so far as well. So if I uh, want to summarize the whole concept and workflow, I can summarize it in three main layers. The first layer, which I showed you was basically um, capturing the data, calibrate this data from each sensors and we make sure that we data we're getting from sensors is correct and calibrated, store it on a database, having a reliable and, and data management system in place. And in layer two, developing applications to analyze this data um, and also 
and integrate this data you are getting from each individual sensors uh, and also make sense out of them and come up with a, a single storyline, let's say. But the last layer, which is sometimes neglected by a data scientist and a plant scientist, is visualizing these data. So visualize this huge amount of data using the traditional uh, visualization tools like Excel. Sometimes it's not um, uh, an ideal uh, option. So we started uh, developing a, a, a framework uh, using, um, I call it a modern interactive visualization uh, tools, which I just uh, would like to give a br brief overview and concept of how capable and the, uh, the, uh, the visualization is. So this is just a, a rough um, overview. So um, in terms of how you can plot and interact with your data, for instance, this one uh, is our PCR experiments. It's a height value. And uh, from um, 19 of November till uh, um, 11th of April. And um, each uh, graph uh, represents one, uh, uh, one variety and you, there is no limit of um, um, basically plotting a graph. In this example, for instance, we have over 50, 50 graphs uh, without losing a, res a resolution. You can scroll down. Uh, up and, and see these values and you can even hover over each individual data and you get the plot ID, the date you're getting and the value as well. And you can easily zoom in to your data uh, without losing resolution. Again, hover each of um, your data, getting the, the ID and values. And if you pay attention on the X axis, when I zoom out, it goes from date to a um, month and then if I zoom out even further if, uh, it goes uh, two years so it's 2017 16 15 so if you have such a uh, data uh, previous years you can easily visualize it and interact with them so if this is just a rough uh, 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 really rough demo to show how capable of uh, mo using modern interactive tools and uh, putting this framework in place really help and to um, make sense and get um, uh, an initial and um, basically overview of your uh, data instead of really rely on traditional uh, visualization tools like Excel. And last but not least is the low cost phenotyping. It also requires a separate presentation, but we also working on low cost phenotyping concept. For instance, this image taken from John Center and they have a Raspberry Pi um, on the uh, on the field. Uh, they they capturing uh, and, 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 and plan, monitoring plant growth and development using visible camera. And some of the application I presented uh, earlier basically can be applied on such uh, uh, small and relatively low cost uh, factors like uh, Raspberry Pi uh, as well, because not anyone can afford such. Um, uh, complicated and modern um, uh, scan, um, um, platform like field or scan analyzer. So some of the applications we have developed can be easily integrated in such compact and um, 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 platform uh, as well. And at the end, I would like to thank um, our phenotyping uh, team at uh, Rotam says Malcolm Hawksworth is the head of the phenotyping group and also head of the plant science department at Rotam state. Um, and is uh, only myself as a computer scientist and Nicolas Everle as a plant physiologist working uh, specifically uh, on the uh, field scan analyzers. Uh, we are only two persons uh, working on the field scan analyzers uh, at the moment, and also Andrew Marsh and Adam working on uh, UAV applications. So I would like to thank you all for listening and I'm open uh, to questions. Thank you. So oh, thank you, Puria. Excellent talk. It's very impressive hardware, Jeff. I think people are still uh, struggling with the tool potentially. But I guess you have questions. 
So if you have questions, uh, you can put them into the chat window of the Join Me tool, like I did. So we've got at least one question for you. So one the question is, uh, you mentioned the drone and field analyzer. Are you linking these two types of data already to explore results from other, uh, from other fields? Uh, yes. So this year, uh, so this is our second uh, year uh, experiment. So this year, we also uh, getting and uh, basically uh, uh, getting the data from our visible and thermal uh, data from UAVs on the same uh, experiments. Um, same area we are observing from a field desk analyzer. So we are collecting this data, but we haven't uh, quite analyzed the data um, um, from the UAVs we've got so far uh, to compare it with the field desk analyzer. But uh, this year we started doing this, yes. Yeah. Because I was thinking about the air counting algorithm. Do you think the resolution of the drone images would be that high that you could apply the same algorithm that you developed on the like the field scan analyzer uh, also on the drone images? Uh, it depends. If you're flying uh, 50 meters above canopy with 80 megapixels of a visible camera, probably not. But uh, I believe if you fly lower, um, it it it, it 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 can be possible, yes. It really depends on the resolution, and we are we really have a very high resolution visible camera at the moment, and it's uh, not far from uh, possible. I mean, yeah. Okay. The viewer number six already also placed the question for you in the chat window. Um, Could you um, mention your name, number uh, six? I missed the use of CF. The chlorophyll fluorescence camera or right. so, supply. Field yes, yes, to fluorescence. So we started. Um, So we started calculating. I'm not an expert, so I basically uh, helped the, the our plant scientists to uh, extract the plant from background using a fluorescent uh, camera. But the first thing we've done was uh, um, segment calculating FM over F0 and uh, calculating quantum yield, which again, uh, it's really depend on the geometry of your plant. And uh, we really need to integrate the, the, the data we're getting from PS2 to 3D data um, for measuring really the, the quantum yield. Um, but we started using only the fluorescence, but I'm not really sure how accurate the results we're getting. But we get, basically, we're getting the average values. Uh, but uh, certainly, we need to integrate this data, uh, for instance, the thermal data even, and fluorescent data into um, the three D data to get a, a more accurate result. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If, if others have a question, this is your um, moment to put them in the chat window. If not, then I would like to thank you all for participating in this first online uh, webinar. Uh, organized by IPPN. So more will follow soon. So uh, if you have topics or you would like to present your own work online through IPPN, then send me or one of the, my uh, colleagues in the working group uh, an email, and then we'll set a date and uh, organize it. I would like to, again, thank you, Poria, for giving this nice talk and being the first doing it. And I wish you all a very pleasant day. Actually, I muted uh, Puria. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Come back again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So if anyone else had a further question, I'm open uh, to answer it. Uh, so you have my email address and can easily find me at Rotamstead website. And I'm happy to, to answer all the questions later on. OK, excellent. I'll keep the line open for a minute or few. And I recorded the session, so we will put this webinar also online. So 
if you participated a little bit too late or you missed it, then uh, you can, or you want to distribute it to colleagues, you have this option. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.